and welcome to our afternoon money making mom scope. This afternoon we're going to be talking about Pinterest. I'm so excited to be sharing with you some of my tips and tricks and strategies and techniques and just helping you come behind the scenes and see how we use Pinterest and what we do and what is working for us. So welcome. my scope this morning, you know that um, I got um, somehow featured on the home page of um, Pinterest as a trending um, scoper the last uh, few days. And so my Pinterest, I'm sorry, my Periscope followers blew up. Literally, I got like 15,000 new Periscope followers. It was insane. And um, so we had a whole bunch of trolls and so i might have to we're gonna see i'm hoping that we won't have this, this morning we just had an insane number of trolls so i'm kind of waiting to see if we need to block a whole bunch of people because this morning my regular people could not get on because there were so many trolls so we're just gonna yeah a lot of blocking and the trolls are everywhere no they're out in force um, so this morning it was my poor, um, my poor regulars couldn't get on. Um, new follower, welcome. So glad to have you here. So for those of you who aren't new, my name is Crystal Payne and I'm the founder of MoneySavingMom.com. I have been blogging for 10 years and, um, I have been on Periscope for the last few years. And honestly, um, when, sorry, not Periscope, Pinterest, I'm like the P words. Okay. Pinterest. We're talking about Pinterest. Um, I have been on Pinterest for the past few years and, um, honestly, when Pinterest came out, I was not so sure about it and I waited to get on it for a while and I actually made the mistake of not getting on it soon enough and you know what happened then um, I could not get my name so my blog is moneysavingmom.com and I was not able to get the um, Money Save Your Mom on Pinterest. I ended up having to get, and you can see right there, pinterest.com forward slash MSM blog. Thank you, Mara. Um, and so, word to the wise, number one, make sure that you get your name. Make sure that you go ahead and, um, just a second, make sure that you actually go ahead and get your name and set up your account with your name as soon as you set up a blog or a site or whatever because I wish that I had and I didn't and then I had to pay for it um, because now it's you know it's so confusing when you're like it's pinterest.com forward slash MSM blog so that is my number one tip um, but anyway so I really started investigating Pinterest um, a few years ago and then I started um, trying to just really be strategic with it and one of my friends Ruth Sukup who has written a book called how to blog for profit without selling your soul she is the Pinterest queen and she really 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 helped me to figure out a strategy for Pinterest and then we've taken that strategy we've tweaked it and we've um, worked on it and I want to share with you some days today some things that we have found that have worked now if you were on my blab earlier with Jack Goins you would have heard me say that I am actually not this Pinterest queen in the sense of if you go to my Pinterest account which this is my Pinterest account pinterest.com forward slash MSM blog, um, you will see that I don't have these amazing pictures. I don't have these amazing tutorials. That's not my gift. And I've had to just own that that's not my gift and that's okay. But I have learned 
many things that have helped even though I don't have those amazing graphic and photography and tutorial skills that I can still use Pinterest to be very, very, very effective for our blog. So the first thing that I would recommend when you set up your Pinterest board is you want to obviously fill this in, have your picture. I have crystal at moneysavingmom.com. I chose to use my profile picture and my name. And the reason was is because I wanted some personality. I didn't want it to just be money saving mom. I wanted to bring my personality into it. I know some people are so talented there and I just have to not compare myself to them because I will never measure up. So I did Crystal and Money Saving Mom as my profile name because I wanted to have Money Saving Mom attached to it, but I also wanted to have some personality. I feel like bringing yourself into everything that you do, if people are following you instead of your blog or your blog idea, they're going to stick with you even if you kind of change what you blog about or what you do. If they, if they connect with you as a person, that makes a big difference in your longevity. So then next, you're gonna wanna fill out your profile and tell people who you are and what you do. And honestly, I, um, I, didn't, I didn't plan for this scope to, I didn't like, I didn't even look at what I have here because I just want to be really honest about, I don't want to try to like have it all, you know, perfect. I just want to show you this is what it is. So um, I say child of God, wife, mom of three, author, speaker, aspiring runner. My mission to challenge women to wisely manage time, resources, and live life on purpose. And I just realized that I have a typo. I have a typo in my bio, so apparently I need to fix that. And um, apparently maybe you should not be listening to what I have to say. I'm gonna get that fixed. But anyway, so tell people who you are and what you're about. You need to define that as a blogger, as whatever you do online, you need to define who you are and what you're about. So then once you've done that, um, one of the things that I have found to be very, very, very helpful is that um, if you notice, the first few boards that I have up here, one, we try to have pictures that really, really pop. So you don't want boring pictures. You can kind of change the cover picture every once in a while. This probably needs to be changed um, because that one, but like this one, you can see that one pops. You want ones that really pop, that have some color and that are gonna be eye-catching because that's what Pinterest is all about. Um, so, the, my top boards are the ones that kind of define me and I change them sometimes, but these are what people really come to me for. So I have the best of money saving mom board make over your mornings because that's a product that I released and I wanted to really push it through um, a board and then freezer cooking and money saving ideas. Next in line, we have money making ideas, getting your home and life in order, do it yourself, weekly menu plans and family and parenting. So um, how do you block the trolls? If you just click on their, when they follow you, you can click on their profile and you can choose to block them. Um, you just have to click on their profile. Yay, you're on. Okay, so you wanna have the boards that are at the top be the ones that are really kind of what you're about and that they define you. You also want to get on as many group boards as you possibly can. So for those of you who might not be familiar with what a group board is, a group board is a collaborative board. So that means multiple people are on this board and multiple people can pin on this board. So the way that you know whether something is a group board is I will show you. You can see in the corner, you can see the little people sign. There's multiple people right there. That means that it is a group board. Can you move boards around? Yes, you can. You just drag and drop them. You can rearrange boards in alphabetical order. You can arrange them however. So in order to get on a group board, one, click on the group board. So you can go to my Pinterest profile, this is what I did when I was trying to get on group boards. I went to people's Pinterest profiles who had quite a few followers and I looked for the group boards that they were a part of. So you can see, this is the Life on Purpose board. 
One, you can see who is the owner of the board. The person whose profile image is first. That is the person who owns the board. They are in charge of the board and they add people. Some boards are open so that other people can add their friends and people they know. But some boards are closed, so people who are on the board can't add. Only this person can add, the person who owns the board. So if you will read this, this will tell you what the board is about. If the board is um, accepting new members, it will say it up here. So some boards will say, email a certain address in order to be added. Or some boards will say, leave a comment on one of my um, posts on this board to be added. So they'll give you instructions on how to be added. Do I have to have a personal relationship with someone to get on their board? Not necessarily. So if you go to my Pinterest profile, I have a lot of group boards that I'm a part of. Every Per, every person's group board is different. So for instance, I have some group boards and we basically have a rule that if I do not know the person personally, I don't have them on my board. Um, so I'm pretty picky about my boards just because I wanna keep them small and it's really to be able to provide an opportunity for some of my close friends to be able to share their pins and um, get those pins viewed by a lot of people. The other boards, they want them to be as large as possible and they don't have a lot of criteria. So go and find some larger pinners and see what boards they're a part of. How do you keep straight which pins you've pinned to which board? That's a good question. Okay, let's talk about, I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about group boards because that is really the thing that's been so huge for us. So here's the beauty of group boards. When you pin to a group board, I don't think it's changed. Y'all let me know if it's changed because this is, I haven't been on Pinterest a ton in the last few months and I was for a while. So when you pin to a group board, it shows to everyone who is following that group board. If you own a group board though, it doesn't, so like if you pin on your own group board, it doesn't show it to all your followers. So what the beauty of group boards is, it's a great way to get your pin out to a bunch of different people. So I'll show you, for instance, let me see if I can find one of our group boards. I have a lot of boards, so that's a good thing and a bad thing. Let's see if I can find this is one. Okay, so this group board right here is Budget Friendly Recipes. This board only has two people. It's me and All You Magazine. And All You Magazine and I, we collaborated and they set up one board and I set up another board. They own one and I own the other one. So we collaborated like that. That's something that you could do with another blogger. You could, if they have a fairly decent following, you know, even just a few hundred or a few thousand, you could say, let's collaborate. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, Julie. I was like, good morning. I'm like, where is my brain today? Um, so you could collaborate and you could choose to, you set up one board and, and um, add them, and then they set up one board and add you. I've done that with a few bloggers and that's a fun way to be able to kind of swap our audiences and help each other out. So you can also do it kind of with a group of bloggers, maybe three or four bloggers that you do the same thing. Tips for creating pictures that pop if you're totally cuteness challenged, non-crafty and super black and white. Um, if you check out Ruth's book, um, her ebook or book that's called How to Plug for Profit Without Selling Your Soul, she talks about how to create pictures that pop. Um, and I think that you can all, you can do a lot with Canva and it's mostly about you taking the picture and you taking a decent picture that's colorful and making sure that it's vertical and then you can just add some text on there. I am not graphic savvy. I am not good with this, but I have created some images just by taking a vertical picture that, that looks decent and adding on some text that those have been repinned all over the place. Now, if you have great graphic skills, they're gonna probably be pinned a lot more. But even me with my very limited rudimentary um, skills have been able to do 
um, some that have done really well. So Canva is a great place. Also PicMonkey, maybe all of you have some other suggestions, but those are free and ways to create some really pretty graphics that aren't, that don't require that you have some like photo editing software or something. The book is How to Blog for Profit Without Selling Your Soul by Ruth Sukup. Welcome. Um, you found me on the trending list. Yay. Okay. So back to group boards. Here's what you want. You want to follow, you want to join as many boards as you can. And you want to join boards that are in your same niche. So boards from um, people that, for instance, so I have a blog called Money Saving Mom. So I'm going to see, um, can I join boards that are frugal and money saving boards? Because I have a lot of material to share on those boards. You also want boards that hit different markets than your market, but that would have some of the same audience, audience and interest. So for instance, like a DIY board. I share a lot of DIY stuff. Um, that is a different market than really the frugal and money saving market, but there's overlap. So join boards that are in your niche and boy, bo boards, boards that hit different markets with same interest. Now, how do you know what to pin on what boards? Okay, so this is kind of the million dollar question and you have to, um, some people have created really elaborate spreadsheets on what to pin when and how. I tried that and I am just not a spreadsheet girl, not at all. So what I have come up with is, um, I will show you, on our best of board. So we have best of my saving mom. These are all posts that have done well on my site and we want to repin them over and over again. So for instance, I'll show you. Let me give you a good, go down a little bit where we have some better pictures. Okay, so just these are posts that are on my site that we can repin over and over and over because they are evergreen. Is my best of board a secret board? No, it's public. And they are evergreen. And that means that they aren't time sensitive. It's not like a deal that's going to go away. They aren't um, about a certain thing that only, you know, like if I would post about Kate Middleton having her baby, and I did a post like that. That's not going to be evergreen as in, you know, a few weeks after she's had her baby and I did this post about how we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to her. Um, that post is not going to be something that's really going to be um, relevant next year. So we only put things on the best of Money Saving Mom board that are relevant long term. They're an evergreen post. And then this is what we pull from to pin on Viral Tag. And Viral Tag is a pin scheduling software. It does cost. We got locked in at a rate of $28 a month, which is kind of expensive, but for the traffic that it sends to our site, it's very, very worth it. There's another one called Tailwind that is also a, a scheduling, a Pinterest scheduling um, software, and they, um, I have not used them personally, but I actually just did a bunch of research last week because we were thinking of switching because some people recommended that. And Meg, my assistant who has used both, she ended up deciding that um, Viral Tag was a better fit for our audience and what we're doing right now. So what we do, um, I do not use Hootsuite, and the reason is is because um, Hootsuite just doesn't seem to be set up specifically for Pinterest. I'd love to hear if someone has had really great experience with Hootsuite. I know they only recently started offering the Pinterest option. Um, I have not heard of Board Booster. Um, I'd love to hear if someone has used that. Okay, so what we will do is we will literally take, so we're adding pins to our best of board all the time. So then you can kind of start at the bottom and we'll just, Meg, my assistant is the one who's doing this now, and um, she will just like take this, open this up, and she's gonna pin this through Viral Tag. She's gonna schedule this on multiple boards, okay? So 
we have on all the group boards and especially the group boards, but look at all, I'll show you. So look at all the boards that I have. I have a lot of boards. The reason is, is because that allows me to be able to pin 60 to 80 posts every single day because we're getting them out on a bunch of different boards. So she will take that and on viral tag, you can clone a post. So she opens up the post, she um, pushes the viral tag button to pull it up in viral tag, and then she just takes the same photo, the same text that we have on our best of board, and she clones that, so you can clone it out so it's 20 times that it's the same pin. And then you can just choose which board you're gonna schedule it on, and then you choose when you're gonna schedule it. So we'll put like 300 hours in between every single, um, or you know, it kinda depends, but it, we might say 300 minutes, we might say um, five hours. We'll, we'll, it, it depends, but we'll, we'll change it up depending upon if it's the kind of um, pin that we could, that it could be pinned all the time or it's something that you don't want it to be pinned very often. Um, that sounds kind of vague, but um, it depends upon which board you're scheduling it on. But usually we do something like that they'll go up, maybe two of the same pins will go up every day, or maybe more, no more than four of the pins on different boards. So she'll schedule out um, one pin to go on as many relevant boards as it would go on. And usually that's somewhere between eight and 15 boards. So you pull up the pin, you set it up just like it looks on the best of MSM board with the same text, the same photo, that takes like 10 seconds. And then you click to clone it, so you clone it. And then you click which boards you're gonna schedule it on. And then you click how long there's gonna be in between each, each um, time that a pin goes up. So all of that in order to schedule eight to 15 pins might possibly take two or three minutes and then you move on to the next one. And so what happens is that she only has to schedule maybe four to five pins off the best of board every single day. They're going on different group boards and different boards are being scheduled. Why clone? Because then you don't have to keep pinning on the same board. You don't, you, the cloning means that then you can do the same pin, you schedule it on a bunch of different boards and it's super, much, 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 quick, much quicker than if you're trying to hand, like each one, you're only um, scheduling it on one board at a time. It saves a ton of time. So she'll do maybe four to five pins a day that get scheduled out on eight to 15 boards over the next two or three days, depending upon how many boards. And then um, we, and then she's done. So if you see, like it just kind of rolls over. So every day there will be pins that were scheduled a few days ago because she scheduled on 15 different boards and then they were spaced out. And so if you just schedule a few pins every single day on multiple boards, then you always have pins going up on all, the, on all these boards. Now, one important thing to consider is that some boards are really small and slow boards. And what I mean by that is that they do not, they're a group board that only has a few members and it doesn't get posted on very often. Well, you don't wanna post 15 posts onto that board. The other thing is, is that you don't, I mean 15 posts on that board like in one day. The other thing is that you don't want to abuse your board privileges. So some boards have a thing where you cannot post any more than five pins in a day or even two pins in a day. So when you're starting out with group boards, I would say start small and kind of figure it out before you jump to um, something where at the level that we're at. We started slowly and built up. Someone asked about hand pinning, and I think Victoria from Snail Pace Transformations is on here, and she has had huge success with hand pinning. Her Pinterest numbers are amazing, and she hand pins, and I'm trying to get her to. She needs to do some kind of course or something on this because she's doing an amazing job with Pinterest, but I know some people who like the login in the morning and at night, kind of when there are peak hours. Victoria, do you, there's Victoria, you should follow her. Do you um, hand pin at a certain time? I'd love to know. We need to get her to do a scope on this because she's the, she's the master of this. But Jennifer, when do you hand pin? I'd love to hear if you guys hand pin at a certain time of the day, because that's one thing that I feel like is, is very important, is that if you're gonna hand pin 
um, versus using a scheduler that you need to do it at an opportune time. So I found that evenings between like about 8 and 11 p.m. Central Time, for my audience, that's when they're on Pinterest the most, and weekends, especially weekend evenings. So you do 8 a.m., 2 p.m., and 8 p.m. Do you have a like a spreadsheet? I think Victoria has a spreadsheet of everything when she's going to pin it. For us personally, how much time does it take each day? It doesn't take very long. Um, so we do the scheduling first, and then we do hand pin. And I'm going to show you what we hand pin um, in just a minute. How far out can you clone with viral tag? Um, you can do it like literally, I think, um, I know I've done it weeks in advance. Um, you're a pen and paper girl. So do you write down? Do you have a um, do you have a system? Do you have a blog post on this that you can send us to? Because I'd be curious. Um, two to three pens every hour you are up. Okay. A spreadsheet would be great for those of you who aren't ready to invest in viral tag. Do you pin the same posts that do the best on Facebook? Um, yes, although um, what I was going to mention is that on Google Analytics, you can see what people are clicking through. So you don't want just pins that are going to be shared and repinned because being shared and repinned doesn't do anything for you. People don't click through. So I'm going to show you on my Google Analytics. I'm going to show you what you can see. I don't even know what's in here. I haven't looked on Pinterest for a little while. Um, whoops, I got on the wrong one. Okay, so on, um, you can see over here where you can go in and you can see your analytics. You can click on social and then you click on overview in your Google Analytics. And here you can see your Facebook and Pinterest. You can see how many people you're getting and, um, to your blog from Facebook and Pinterest. And, um, then you click on that and then you can see exactly here, I'll show you. So you can see which posts have done the best on Pinterest. And typically for us, um, it will be similar posts. Every single month, these same posts will be kind of in the top 20 or 30. So those are the ones that we focused on pinning the most because it's that 80-20 rule of, you know, your top 20 or 30 posts. If you pin those more because those are the ones that are getting click through over the long haul, um, you're going to see so much more traffic than if you pin all your posts all the time. You're trying Tailwind this week. Great so far. I've heard really good things about Tailwind. And um, the reason we didn't switch was just because we have a good system. And also because I was a little afraid that um, what was going to happen is um, they were going to bump up our rate. Meg, my assistant, said that she's um, worked with some bloggers who um, they will bump their rate up to some really high rate. And we have this locked in rate with Viral Tag, and I just don't want all of a sudden for us to lose that locked in rate because we will if we cancel viral tag and if I go to Tailwind and they say it's only $9.99 and when they see how much I pin all of a sudden they're like, oh, it's $500 a month or something. So yeah, I know, don't mess with a good system. So we just decided to stick with it. But anyway, so go into your Google Analytics and see what people are clicking through on. And I would start with those. So if you're gonna make a spreadsheet of which posts to pin, you could pin those to a best of board, so you just have them, and you don't even have to look at your analytics, although you should look at your analytics sometimes, or you can um, just make a spreadsheet with all of these. You've been using Board Booster for several months, and it's amazing. Is it is it a pin, is it like a pin scheduling sort of thing? I'm going to have to go check it out. I've not heard of it before. Um, the other thing I was going to recommend is that you go and check your um, pins on Pinterest that are coming from your blog that you did not pin. So you can go to Pinterest and then source, pinterest.com forward slash source, and then you type in your URL. Show you if you can see that up there. So you can type in your pinterest.com forward slash source forward slash moneysavingmom.com. And you can then see what other people are pinning from your site. This is very, very insightful because you can find out what people are pinning. 
and what they found interesting. And sometimes there'll be some things on there. I'm like, that is a post from five years ago. And so that's, you can type in your, instead of um, Cynthia, put that in there, pinterest.com forward slash source forward slash money saving mom. But you can um, take out the money saving mom and put in your um, URL or any URL. And that will then pull up all the pins from that URL. So that's a really great way to see what people are pinning from your site. And sometimes it will be posts that you kind of completely forgot about. And you'll see, oh my goodness, like they're getting shared all over the place or something. Do you use Pinterest plugins on your site? Which ones? Okay. Y'all know that I've never installed a plugin. I don't know how to install a plugin. But we do have Pinterest buttons. And I'm going to go look in my installed in plugins. And I will tell you if there's anything that says Pinterest. Just a second. I have Joy from 5J's Design. She does all my amazing tech stuff because I would blow up the blog if I tried. Okay, let me see. What, does she do? what do we have here? There's a Pinterest Pin It Button Light. And so that's the Pin It Button. I don't see anything else. I think that's all we have. So the Pinterest Pin It Button Light. Um, if you actually, what I have found is that if you actually create a pin it button and put it underneath. I will show you a post as an example. Let me find one. If you create a pin it button and you put it underneath with the kind of text that you want people to pin. So this is an actual button that I created. I mean, as in I went to Pinterest there, the Pinterest, what is it called? I think it's, it, Pinterest tools or something, someone, if you know, where you can create these buttons and then you can type in exactly what picture is going to be pinned when people pin it and exactly what text is going to be pinned. So for instance, if you click on that pin it button, um, it pulls up this. And so it already has the text underneath there. This is text that I found that has done well on Pinterest. So this is a lot of work to create that pin it button and put it on your post. But if you have the time to do this, I have found that by adding the pin it button with the picture and with the, the text, it gets pinned a whole lot more than if you just have a pin it button on each individual post. So make it easy, put it like right under the picture and then I'll usually put it right at the end of the post. And I don't do this very often and I should do, a, I was doing a much better job of it and then life got busy and it didn't, um, it just, it fell off the, it, it fell off the priority list. But pin it widget, is that what it is? Okay, but I will tell you that if you're trying to increase your traffic, doing this has made a big difference in getting people to pin stuff. Any tips on text that leads to click through? Okay, so that's a great question. You want text that is hooky. And by that I mean that you're gonna want people to click through immediately. You don't want people to say, oh, that's a good one, I should repin that. You want them to say, what? What is this? And so the picture and the text, just like we talked about with Facebook, really makes a difference. So some, I mean, I do different things. But if you say like, I really love number three, or if it's a recipe, you'll be like, you'll never guess what the secret ingredient is or something that's going to kind of hook people and they're gonna say, wait, what? Or do you know all of these things? Wow, I did not know that whatever. Now, now be honest, like don't just make up stuff that's fake because you don't wanna clickbait people, but you do want to have it be interesting. If it's just blah text, it's not gonna catch their attention and they're not gonna click through. But your photo and your text on your photo is what matters more than the text underneath your photo. However, the text underneath the photo, they, they look at the photo first and then they look at the text. And if the text entices them, then they'll click through. Okay, so we schedule from our best of board onto 40 to 50, we do 40 to 50 pins on multiple boards every single day that we schedule through viral tag doesn't take very long because we're cloning the post to multiple boards. But then we also schedule, um, not we don't schedule, we will hand pin deals or other posts that I will find that I love from other people's sites. So for instance, right now, my book, Money Making Mom that came out last week, um, this book, 
I'm obviously wanting a lot of people to hear about it on Pinterest and everywhere. And so what I did was anybody who blogged about it, who posted something about it, I'm going to share their pins on Pinterest because I want as many people as possible to hear about this book. So um, that is, well, I'll hand pin things like that. I will hand pin a, just maybe a great article that I found. I hand pin the books that I read. I'll hand pin sometimes a recipe I want to try or a DIY tip or something. So I hand pin those types of things and then we also hand pin all the deals. So every day we go through our site. Is Christy on here? Yay, Christy. Oh my goodness. So fun to see you. I've been thinking about you so much and miss it. I was just this morning, I was watching, um, I was blow drying my hair thinking, I miss Christy's scopes. Um, I hope you're doing okay. Been thinking about you a lot. Okay, so we will then go in and hand pin all of the deals from the past day and then any other type of post like a printable or a content piece we're going to schedule that to go on any relevant board so every day we're going through the last 24 hours worth of post and we're hand pinning the deals and we're scheduling out the content pieces or ones that could go on multiple boards so um a lot of people say well how much time are you spending on this because now I have someone who's helping me with this, I don't hardly spend any time on Pinterest. When I was doing it, and I was the only person who was doing it, and I was doing it um, a lot in the sense of really trying to be strategic with it, and that's when we significantly increased our unique visitors, um, I was spending about 20 to 30 minutes a day. And I would actually do it when I was on the treadmill. The book, um, are we referring to Money Making Mom? Yes, it's on Amazon. Um, this book came out last week, and if you are thinking of starting a business or you just want to find a way to increase your income or you want to find a way to use your passions and your gifts and your skills and your experience to make an in income, to make an impact, I think you'll be really encouraged by this book. And if you go to moneymakingmombook.com, moneymakingmombook.com, you can sign up for my free five-day course on how I make a full-time income from home. And when you do that, you will also get subscribed to my weekly behind-the-scenes business email, my Money Making Mom email, where I share tips and tricks. Like yesterday, I shared a Facebook tip that's been totally changing my Facebook engagement. And it's a very simple change that's made a big difference on my traffic. So that's moneymakingmombook.com. Sign up for my free five-day course. Okay, so um, as far as the time when I um, was doing this all by myself and we were seeing a significant growth, um, thank you, Christy, you're so sweet. Reading it from your couch, good for you. You stay on that couch, you need to heal. I'm so glad that you're taking time to rest. Um, so I was spending maybe 20 to 30 minutes a day and I was scheduling the pins and hand pinning some. And that, and then I was also kind of going around and looking for the group boards and joining those group boards and just getting more accustomed. So it took me about 20 to 30 minutes a day, but the results and the fruit that we saw as a result of doing that was so, so worth it. So you could just spend even 10 or 15 minutes a day, schedule out a few posts or hand pin a few posts on different boards and hand pin some, some posts from your site to group boards especially. Thank you guys so much for sharing, you're so kind. Um, also, we talked about um, making sure that you're pinning the most clicked through post and, and also be communal, share other people's pins. Pinterest rewards community, just like Facebook. So start start a group board. That's I've loved starting some group boards and inviting people to be a part of those group boards. I've loved it because it it just it feels so wonderful to be able to provide a place for people to share their wonderful post and to share my audience with these bloggers who are so smart and savvy. So start a group board, share other people's pins, and I highly recommend if you haven't done so, to read Ruth's ebook, How to Blog for Profit Without Selling Your Soul. Um, I have learned so much about Pinterest from her. And then take what you learn from her and then just start experimenting. Say you're gonna spend 10 to 15 minutes every single day on Pinterest and you're gonna watch what other people are gonna are doing. You're gonna you're gonna just experiment, 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 and learn. And you might just see a little trickle of results at first, but over time, you can really start to see it pay off. 
Now, one thing I wanted to mention, um, and if you have any questions, oh, it's free on Kindle Unlimited right now. Thank you so much for mentioning that. If you have questions, um, I have a little bit of time and I'd be happy to answer them um, at the end, but I wanted to show you one thing and that was um, for those pins that we talked about that are um, kind of become your top 20 pins, you want to make sure that you monetize those well. So monetizing those well, for instance, I'm gonna show you this example. I pulled up that one that was um, the 15 chore ideas for four year olds. This one is one that has been pinned over 209,000 times. And it's gotten, a, for a long time, it was actually our um, most pinned ever one, but now there's some other that has surpassed it. So on this post, I've gone in and I've made it really, really um, monetized as well as um, sticky. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I hope that when people click through and find this pin, if they've never found my site before, that they're going to kind of click around because I have a lot of links in there for people to click through to. And I also hope that maybe they're going to sign up for my email newsletter. And I also hope that maybe they're going to do something that's going to provide a little bit of income for us. So, um, I have, let's see if you can see it. Um, so right at the top, I have a link to yesterday. I posted about 10 chore ideas for to toddlers and that's a link back to another post. And then I have right in here, when you go here, there is after some text, then there's a plug for this ebook that's on Teach Me to Serve and it's about how teaching little kids how to serve. So we have that plug. And then you go down a little bit further and I have more links in there. I could have, since this is about chores, I could link to um, something on Amazon like a child size broom and mop and things like that. You can link to Amazon. Then I have another, so after more text, then there's another affiliate link and this is for my job chart. And this is when people sign up for this for free. I earn a little bit of money for every sign up. Then at the bottom, I have links to my other post where it's 20 ideas for seven year, chore ideas for seven year olds, 10 chore ideas for toddlers, and then a free printable. And then at the bottom I have where they can sign up to get free kids chore charts. And that puts them on my email list. Then also at the very bottom, I have these ads, which are extra ads that I put on the bottom. These are from media.net and I only have these on my top 100 posts. And it's been very, very um, great passive income to have that right there. Okay, so do you see how I did a whole lot of things on that one post? What I started doing was I picked my top 100 posts and then I just slowly, like every day, I would just do one post where I would make sure it had a nice image, it had a pin it button, it had lots of links back, and had lots of extra links and affiliate links. And I just slowly worked through all of those posts. And by doing that then, because those are the most click through posts, then it's that passive income. All I have to do is schedule it on the boards and other people are then repinning it. And when I'm posting on Facebook, people are repinning it and they're clicking through. And so I'm well monetizing this, you know, just by taking this little bit and I'm making, you know, stretching it for as far as it can go and monetizing it as much as possible. I'm not gonna have all of those ads and things in a normal post that's gonna go up on my site, but because I know these are posts from the archives that lots of new people are gonna be clicking through to, I wanna make sure that I monetize them. So that's what I was gonna recommend to make sure and do that. And then to um, have a lot of work to do. Just remember, baby steps, baby steps. Set, set some small goals and um, just break them down into bite-sized pieces and just chip away at them a little bit by a little bit. I can look at these and I can say, there's so much more that I need to do. I need to find the hundred new posts and I need to do all that. And I just have to pace myself because we can't do it all, but we can pace ourselves. You did just two a week for a long while. Yeah. And Victoria has done such a great job. If you go to her site, snailpacetransformations.com, she's done such a great job of um, making her post very pinnable and pin worthy. And then her posts are getting pinned all over 
over the place because she's done such a great job of making them pinnable. And she even has a post, um, it's like a zero budget Christmas post. I can't remember the exact title of it, but this thing has blown up and she's made it so monetized. People love the post, but every time when they click through, she's getting people to sign up for all these different things and she's earning good income from it just because she's taken that little bit of time, vested that time on the front end for those posts that are gonna over and over and over and over just keep bringing in all the traffic. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, and I hope that it's been helpful. And um, if you have any questions um, on anything, feel free to tweet at me. If you have any suggestions for a future, um, any kind of future um, periscopes that you would love for me to do, I would love to hear your suggestions. And um, I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. And we will see. I might be scoping this weekend. I might not. We'll just see. But um, anyway, thanks so much for joining us. And don't forget, if you have not gotten a copy of Money Making Mom, you can go to moneymakingmombook.com to check out more information on that. And also sign up for my free five-day course on how I make a full-time income from home. And remember that when you sign up, that signs you up for my behind-the-scenes Money Making Mom email newsletter where I share tips and tricks and techniques that I am learning that are helping me and um, mistakes that I'm making and resources that I'm finding be really helpful. So that's at moneymakingmombook.com. Thanks so much, and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon.